In chapter 26 of The Count of Monte Cristo, a disguised Dantes arrives at the dilapidated inn run by Caderousse and his ailing wife, referred to as La Carcante. He tells Caderousse that he was at the deathbed of Edmond Dantes, who died in prison without ever learning why he had been imprisoned. Dantes makes up a story about how he's an abbé who was imprisoned with Dantes, and given a diamond ring, Dantes wanted him to sell to give the money to the people who loved him. His father, Mercedes, Caderousse, Don Glar, and Fernand. La Carcante warns Caderousse not to tell what he knows about them. Caderousse's greed conquers his reluctance, and he tells the abbé the whole story. In chapter 27 of The Count of Monte Cristo, Caderousse begins by describing the grief of old Dantes after his son's arrest. Mercedes wanted him to go home with her so she could take care of him, but he refused. He became more isolated, sold his belongings, and refused to eat, and died of starvation. Danglar wrote the letter condemning Dantes. Fernand sent the letter. Caderousse was drunk and thought the letter was a joke. And when he wanted to speak out, Danglar <clears throat> convinced Caderousse that he could be implicated too. Monsieur Morel tried so many times to have Dantes freed that Morel was persecuted by the monarchy when Napoleon lost power. Now, Morel is on the brink of financial ruin. Danglar has become an accounts clerk for a Spanish banker and made a fortune by getting a contract to supply the French army during the war in Spain. Fernand was called to active duty in the army. He deserted with his general and went over to the English. When Napoleon lost power, he and the general returned and were promoted. He was later awarded the Legion of Honor and was given the title of Count. Fernand now has a mansion in Paris. Mercedes waited 18 months and convinced that Dantes was dead finally agreed to marry Fernand, then a lieutenant. Fernand was worried that Dantes would return, so he moved away with Mercedes. Mercedes acquired an education. She and Fernand had a son, Albert. Caderousse doesn't know what became of Vifol. He left Marseille shortly after his marriage. The Abbe, Dantes, says it's obvious Caderousse was Edmond's only real friend, and he gives Caderousse the ring worth 50,000 francs. In return, he asks for the red silk purse that Morel had given to old Dantes. In chapter 28 of The Count of Monte Cristo, Dantes, disguised as an Englishman, goes to see the mayor of Marseille. The mayor confirms that Morel has had some difficulties, but he's always met his debts and is very honest. At the mayor's suggestion, the Englishman goes to see the inspector of prisons, who has invested 200,000 francs in Morel's firm, and says Morel has just told him that if the pharaon does not arrive with its cargo intact, he won't be able to make the two payments he owes him. The Englishman offers to buy Morel's debt for cash at full price. As a brokerage fee, he asks that he be allowed to see Abbe Faria's prison records. The inspector recalls the abbé's fixation on his treasure. Then he tells the story of the dangerous Edmond Dantes, who tunneled through the abbé's cell and drowned when he tried to escape in the abbé's shroud. Dantes pours through the prison records, locating his own, including the denunciation letter. He sees that Vifor described him as a fanatical Bonapartist who played an important role in Napoleon returning from Elba. Lies! In chapter 29 of The Count of Monte Cristo, Morel's office is failing, and he had resorted to selling his wife's jewelry and the household silver to pay the company's debts. He will be able to make the payment only when the pharaon returns to port, and the ship is over a month late. The Englishman, Dantes, arrives and says that he has bought Morel's debts, and he offers to postpone the due date for the debt that Morel owes to the inspector of prisons. Morel promises that he will make the payment on September 5th, saying to himself, or I shall be dead. When the Englishman sees Julie, Morel's daughter, he tells her that one day she'll receive unusual instructions from Sinbad the Sailor that she must carry out precisely, no matter how strange they seem. In chapter 30 of The Count of Monte Cristo, Morel goes to Paris to ask for a loan from Don Glar. Morel had recommended that Danglar go to work for the Spanish banker, setting him on the path to becoming a millionaire. But Danglar refuses to make the loan. Morel returns home to his wife and daughter, who fear that he might commit suicide to avoid the dishonor of bankruptcy. Morel's son, Maximilian, arrives home from the army, having received an alarming letter from his mother and sister. A letter arrives for Julie from Sinbad the Sailor, instructing her to go to a certain apartment where she is to take a red silk purse from the mantelpiece and give it to her father by 11 o'clock. 
Morel convinces his son that death is better than shame. Maximilian agrees to leave the army and to take care of his mother and sister after Morel's death. Morel sends his son away and sits at his desk with loaded pistols ready. As the clock is about to strike 11, when the Englishman is due to arrive, he puts the gun to his mouth. Just then, Julie enters, waving the red silk purse and shouting, saved! Inside the purse is the paid bill for the debt and a huge diamond with the note, Julie's dowry. She explains the letter from Sinbad the sailor. On top of all this, the Faron is coming into port. As the townspeople turn out to cheer the arrival and congratulate Morel, Dantes sails out of the harbor on his yacht, saying, farewell goodness, humanity, gratitude. I have taken the place of providence to reward the good. Now let the avenging God make way for me to punish the wrongdoer.